This is part five of the chapter three lecture notes. <clears throat> we left off with DNA replication. DNA replication has to occur before mitosis or before the cell divides because um, each new cell, after the cell divides, each new cell will need a copy of the DNA. So what happens is the DNA um, is double-stranded, so the two strands separate from each other. Um, we say that it unwinds and separates. The uh, DNA strand unwinds and separates. DNA polymerase comes along and adds complementary bases to the old strand. So you end up with two new strands. One is shown here, and the second strand is shown here. And each new strand has one old template and one new template created by the DNA polymerase. Um, <clears throat> and so we call that semi-conservative. So each strand of DNA has an old and a new strand. And that occurs before mitosis. That occurs during the S phase of interphase. Mitosis occurs in four stages. And they are prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. And then after mitosis is cytokinesis. And actually cytokinesis occurs around the same time as telophase. They kind of overlap. Um, but mitosis is the division of the nucleus and the um, chromosomes in the nucleus, whereas cytokinesis is the division of the cytoplasm. Okay, during prophase, the chromosomes become visible. So we say that the chromatin condenses and forms chromosomes. Each of the two copies of DNA is called a chromatid or a sister chromatid. The chromatids are connected at the centromere, and that's what makes the chromosome look like an X. Um, the nucleoli, remember the nucleolus or nucleoli produce ribosomes. Those disappear, and um, it's not like magic. They dissolve is what they do. And then two pairs of centrioles move to opposite poles. So remember we talked about how centrioles are involved in cell division. Now we're going to see what they do. They organize microtubules into spindle fibers, and those spindle fibers are going to help organize the chromosomes and help separate them. The nuclear envelope also disappears or dissolves, and then the chromatids attach to the spindle fibers. All of this happens in prophase, and that's a lot to learn but if you learn prophase, then you can take the steps that happen in prophase and reverse them. And that's what happens in telophase. And the other steps are easy. Metaphase, the chromatids move to the middle of the cell, and that's called the metaphase plate. They line up. And then in anaphase, the chromatids split apart. And the daughter chromosomes are pulled toward opposite ends of the cell. So the, chroma, the chromosomes separate, basically. Then in telophase, remember, we can reverse everything that happened in prophase. So if the nuclear membrane dissolved, now it's going to reform. If the nucleoli dissolved or disappeared, now they're going to reappear. The DNA coiled or condensed and formed chromosomes. Now it's going to uncoil and form back into chromatin. And then um, the cell is going to prepare to enter interphase again. And cytokinesis um, actually tends to overlap set, uh, telophase of mitosis. Um, the cytoplasm divides and the cell pinches in half um, so that there's a... Um, plasma membrane around each new daughter cell. And um, here's some pictures of the original parent cell in interphase. And you can see the nucleus, um, the, the DNA inside the nucleus is all spread out. You can't see individual chromosomes. And then in prophase, you can see the centrioles begin moving to opposite ends of the, of the cell. The nucleus and the nucleolus begin to dissolve or disappear. The chromatin, which you see all spread out in the parent cell, condenses and forms these X-shaped structures called chromosomes. And the spindle, fi spiber, spindle fibers form and attach to those chromosomes. In metaphase, they line up in the at the metaphase plate. In anaphase, they separate. 
And then in telophase, um, all the stuff that happened in prophase reverses. So the nuclear envelopes begin to reform around the chromosomes. Um, and then cytokinesis occurs and the two new cells split from each other. All right, checkpoint. Give the biological terms for cellular reproduction and cell death. Cellular reproduction, um, I guess, would be cell division or mitosis, and cell death would be apoptosis. Describe interphase. It's going to be the stage where the cell is not dividing. It's the longest stage that a cell is in during its life, and the stages are G1, S, and G2. During G1, the organelles are replicated. During S, the DNA is replicated. And during G2, the spindle fibers are produced um, and other proteins are produced that are needed for cell division. All right, the four stages, mitosis is uh, division of the nucleus, um, and the four stages are prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. What would happen if spindle fibers failed to form in a cell during mitosis? Well, they wouldn't be able to attach to the chromosomes and the chromosomes wouldn't separate. Then we have a section on cancer because tumors are related to uncontrolled mitosis, cells that grow um, when they're not supposed to. They grow and divide when they're not supposed to. So a tumor or a neoplasm is a mass produced by abnormal cell growth. Benign tumors are um, rarely life-threatening. Malignant means that part of the tumor has um, broken off and gotten into the um, lymphatic system or into the body fluids and spread to other areas, and that's called metastasis. And once that happens, we call it cancer. <clears throat> cancer is characterized by gene mutations leading to malignant cells and metastasis. They form extremely active secondary tumors, which stimulate blood vessel growth, and those, those new blood vessels will feed the tumors, um, and that just causes the spread of the, of the cancer to even go even faster. Um, and cancer cells take nutrients and energy away from healthy tissues. An illness characterized by mutations that disrupt normal control processes and produce potentially malignant cells is termed cancer. Defined metastasis is just when cancer spreads. And that is it for chapter three.